to have a lot of more activities today or is it kind of winding down after this? Uh, for me, it's winding down. Yeah. I have to kind of go back to work. Uh, yeah, you got to do the real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah this Hollywood stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we're good. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations and what an honor to talk to you. Wow, so exciting. My kids are very jealous, I have to tell you. Um, you are the pilot of I'm this sorry. mission. And we're going to stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no problem. All right. I just, you know, the commander. I, the commander. Okay, sorry. That's we really, have a yeah. pilot. Yeah. But, sorry, so, captain. Captain, sorry. You know what? Yeah. Good thing. But it's, it's Thank very you. Yeah. Uh, similar because people re think the pilot must be flying, but actually the commander gets to land uh, the yeah. vehicle. So. Well, yeah, okay. The, well, the captain of the mission, I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty heavy-duty stuff. And you're, you're going up in space. You know you have a mission. You, you know, you've got to get the telescope. You've got things to do. But now you've got this added pressure. We have to make a movie here. You know, what were you thinking when you were first told about this whole mission? Well, in the beginning, I think I had a somewhat naive view of IMAX. And I thought, well, we'll have a camera. There'll be a call out in the checklist. Turn it on, turn it off. It'll be pretty easy, straightforward. Then we started learning it was a little more involved than that, uh, and I got an appreciation for what it was going to take. It's the choreography of what's going on during the spacewalk and trying to match that up against the day-night cycles where you only have 45 minutes of light, then 45 minutes of dark, and having the task go between those two periods and no capability to shoot when it was night. So it was a little more complicated than I imagined at first, but I'm glad uh, it really paid off. Yeah, and you you know you saw for the first time. What was it like for you seeing that and reliving it? I guess I would think reliving it is a great way to put it because sitting there watching that on the big screen in 3D to me it was like being back on the flight one more time. It brought a lot of those feelings and emotions back. Uh, when I stood up to walk out, I had that same feeling of uh, trouble walking that I did when I landed off the orbiter. The zero G feeling coming back and my brain readapting to space flight, I think, just watching the movie. So hearing it from an expert, you know, I, me watching it, of course, you know, me and millions of others will never get to go up to space, but do you feel as, as you know, somebody who's been up there that this is giving us a, as good as a perspective as we can get? I think it is. That's the one thing I had been frustrated with in the past is the ability to convey what space flight is really like. The images when you look down at the Earth going by and uh, outside up at the stars, and the movie last night did that better than anything I'd ever seen. Amazing. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, you guys have to prepare, you know, almost a lifetime for, for these types of things. You have to know, you know, every little scenario, every little thing that's going to go on. But once you get up there, you can't prepare or you can't know if something's right, going to go exactly wrong. That. And as we saw in the film, there were a few things. You know, how do you wrap your mind around that and, and have the patience to like, okay, we got to deal with this? The big challenge, I think, for this flight was sitting back before we went and trying to imagine everything that could go wrong and t walk through all the things that uh, we would do if that happened. And in doing that, I think we developed the skills so when we ran into things that went wrong that we hadn't imagined, we said, okay, this is how we worked through that. We had the ground team working with us on board and working together, come up with a solution for each challenge that presented itself. But it takes a long time to get to that point, to get ready. A lot of people across the agency working together uh, and then when you're there executing to be able to draw on that resource uh, really made it all possible. And how much did you have to collaborate with Tony Myers, the director? Because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, she's done some space films before she's never been up there. And so she's relying on you guys to, you know, you got to get me the best thing that you can. You know, how do you please her and know what to get for her? Well, you know, we were trying to keep the mission running as the first priority. I was trying to monitor that as the commander. Uh, but at the same time, keep up with when the shots came, when the lighting was right. We had to pick the uh, focus distance, the aperture for exposure, and then the timing. Because the spacewalks are relatively long, pretty methodical, mm -hmm. so not a lot of things happen quickly. And you only were shooting in 30 second chunks, so you couldn't let it run for a long time and get the exciting stuff later. You had to pick the right time, and that was the challenge. Uh, on one of the shots, you can kind of see nighttime coming if you look back at the Earth. And we were like, oh, I really want to get this shot. It's going to get dark soon. Do you think it'll fit? All right, push the button. I hope it's still light. Oh, got it. That kind of thing. So uh, there were those challenges every day. Yeah. How do you know, you know, you spend a lot of time with your crew mates. Obviously, you have to, you know, work together to prepare to go up. But the bonding, you know, how does it work? How do you know you guys are going to all jive together? Well, we tried uh, to socialize as well as work together. Have spent some time away from work, getting to know each other in different settings. Uh, we took a trip where we were out on kayaks on our own for uh, 10 days, uh, kind of survival situation, 
got to see how each other performed in stressful environments, and I think cemented that bond that we depended on in the flight. Uh, the only way to succeed in space flight, I think, is to do your job and just a little bit more. And if everybody tries to do a little bit more than what they have on their plate, we all work together and we get the job done. Yeah, and it's not that often that you get to have a woman up on board too. And you know, bringing Megan into the uh, into the boys' club, did you give her some ribbon a little bit? Or <laughs> well, she, and she gave it right back. Megan was uh, an excellent crewmate, uh, just a joy to have on board. Consummate arm operator, great work. She was uh, my quarterback. I called her for ascent entry, sitting between me and uh, Ray J. Uh, we would all agree. She would call the plays. We'd execute them when we had emergencies. So uh, she did a phenomenal job, and she fit right in. Um, I, but I understand she doesn't have a nickname yet. Well, we call her Meg. We didn't give her a, a great nickname, but... Uh, you have to work on that. We'll keep working on yeah. that. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm just, I'm just curious because you've been doing this. I can't imagine that it just becomes, oh, old hat. Oh, yeah, just going to space. I mean, do you still pinch yourself every time you go up there? Oh, I do. Uh, I do. It's an incredible... Uh, privilege to be able to see the world from that vantage point. And I kind of pinched myself last night too, watching it, being able to sit there with my wife next to me. We never get to watch a launch together. I'm on one side, she's on the other. And being there, going through that experience together was really uh, special for me. Yeah, I can't, you know, imagine it. It has to take a really special person, especially when you have a family. And I was saying to Megan, for me, and, and all my life, the most emotional part about watching a launch, you know, from watching on TV or wherever I've been watching it, is when you guys walk onto that tarmac and you're waving, you know, goodbye for, you know, and you're going to get on there and who knows. How do you deal with that in your families? And it's amazing. Well, it, it's a, a real treat for me to be able to experience that. And I know I'm going to something that I can't wait to experience. I'm looking forward to that. At the same time, I know my family's on the other side, and they're watching and going through that. I think it's a much more difficult job for them to stand there and watch us get into this vehicle filled with all this power and thrust that's going to rocket us off the planet and have to stand there and observe. Also, you know, even more poignant after knowing the folks on uh, Columbia with that accident, six very good friends of ours uh, uh, that uh, lost their lives in addition to Elon and Ramon. Mm -hmm. in that. So it's a tough challenge being the spouse and staying behind. Yeah, when, when um, two people are going out and they're spacewalking together, there obviously has to be, you know, it's so choreographed. So, you know, how did they prepare or are you prepared to, with each other? That's, a, that's an extra set of, you know, of pressure, I would think. Right, we worked really hard on that in the preparations for the flight. Of course, we trained in the neutral buoyancy lab, a big swimming pool that people float in. Closest thing you can get to floating in space is floating in the water. So they go in their spacesuits, spend uh, six hours at a time practicing that choreography between each other. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's the in the vehicle operator who has the checklist and reads the procedures and keeps them on their timeline, watches what they're doing while the arm operator plays her role. And I got to operate the arm a little bit too. Megan let me touch it a few times, so that was nice. Uh, and everybody's working together, it really took the whole crew to carry it off. Yeah. Uh, now, not a lot of people know this about you, but you have a special connection to Tom Cruise. Can you tell us about that? Well, way back when, uh, Hollywood came to Miramar when I was flying F-14s there, and we made the movie Top Gun. I was one of the pilots who flew the F-14s in the movie, and we got to take the actors uh, out. We filmed with them in the seats a little bit, and Tom flew in my back seat one day out on the range doing some of the maneuvers uh, flying for the movie. That's amazing. That's cool. So, you know, for, so for you, I guess if this space thing doesn't work out, you're going to go to Hollywood, I would yeah. think, huh? Oh, well, my phone hasn't been ringing too much <laughs> lately, but it's nice to have a fallback plan. Excellent. Well, congratulations on this. It's just a wonderful film, and thank you for bringing it to us. It's just uh, outstanding. Well, so I was exciting. so thrilled to be a part of it and to see it last night. To feel the mission again uh, was just a special experience, so it's been phenomenal. It's very cool. Thank you so much, and a pleasure and honor to meet you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Great. Great. Thanks.